Hi everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. Welcome back to the channel. I'm so glad you're here because today we're gonna to be crocheting this gorgeous fall celebration shawl. We're gonna be making this step-by-step -step and stitch-by-stitch. -stitch. I am so excited to share this shawl. I actually was working on this quite a bit over the summer and then I had to kind of wait and share it for the fall season. And I was just putting the last finishing touches on it not too long ago. And this is actually made in a lovely lattice stitch with one yarn cake. So it has this gorgeous gradient. It goes from like a deep forest green through like some mossy greens some gold and mustard colors, and then to this like beautiful rusty red color. So it's a really fun um, shawl to make with just one yarn cake. So very minimal ends to weave in as well. Now, as you can see, you can kind of see me through it. This is a beautiful piece to transition from the warmer months to the cooler months. I did this to sort of celebrate that time when just the first hints of fall are coming and you might need a little something or you just wanna wear a gorgeous accessory in fall colors. That's really the, the um, favorite thing of mine about this, this, the spectrum of fall colors. But um, it, it's like a lighter piece, so you could just wear it if you just need a little something. So it's those days where it's warm and then it becomes cooler and you get kind of a mix and then it starts to like settle down into fall and become cooler. So you could actually wear this draped around your shoulders like this, or what I found is you can kind of bundle this too, because this is a, a lighter weight. Um, it's like a cotton blend, so it has a really nice feel to it. Um, you can kind of bundle this up too, like a scarf, and see how I made a loop? Wrap the loop around, and then kind of tuck it in and fan it out. So if you hop on over to the blog, you can see all the different ways that I've styled it, both as a wrap and then as it gets a little cooler, you could wear it as a scarf as well. So it's very versatile, um, just a really nice piece to have. Now, you can find the full written pattern over at the blog. Um, you can go through step by step. And today we're gonna go through the entire project step by step and stitch by stitch so you can crochet right along with me. It's also found in my Ravelry shop and my Etsy shop. You can get the full ad-free PDF. It has large font, easy to read, and that's both in my Ravelry shop and my Etsy shop. So all the links to everything I mentioned is down below. I also have a wonderful community over at Patreon. So you can join our Fiberflux Gold Pattern Club and get all the month's patterns too in PDF form. I know a lot of you really love the printable ad-free PDF format as well. So that's three different ways you can get that as well. Again, all the links are below and you can find those below. Now, before we get started on the tutorial, we're gonna go through the supplies and then start from the bottom up. It's a very easy stitch to learn. Now, before we get started, be sure and hit that subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. It helps the channel so much and I really appreciate it. I do share tutorials every week, either stitch tutorials or full project tutorials like this. I also have vlogs, roundups, where I share my favorite patterns. We do giveaways pretty often. So hit that subscribe button and get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. So let's get started. Okay, let's look at this gorgeous shawl close up. So for the sizing, the finished piece is about 21 and a half inches wide and then it's about 60 inches long. So it's a nice generous size shawl with lots of drape. And we're gonna learn a little bit of how to customize your shawl too if you need to change it up a little bit. For this project, you're gonna need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, a tape measure is gonna be super helpful. I'm gonna give you the multiples in just a little bit so you can kind of scale it however big or small you want it to be. We're gonna make a, a nice sized wrap, okay? So a tape measure is super helpful. Now we're gonna use a four millimeter G crochet hook with this. And then I have this beautiful yarn cake. Look at these um, lovely fall colors. We, it's like burgundy and a burnt orange, mustard yellow, kind of an evergreen color. Um, this is called Twister from Hobie. This is a 55% acrylic, or excuse me, 55% cotton, 45% acrylic um, cake yarn. And it's a lot of yarn. It's a, a lighter weight. So it's, um, if we spin this around, it is a number two fine on the yarn weight scale. So it's a, a thinner strand. And um, we're gonna be using color 54. That is called orangery, just so you know. And um, I just love the seasonal look of this. 
And this actually recommends a four milli 3.5 to four millimeter um, E through G hook. We're gonna be using the G crochet hook. I went kind of on the top end of that because I want it to have some drape because um, it's a shawl. We're gonna have a nice wrap. Now, each cake of this, we're only gonna need one cake because each cake of this is 1,093 yards. So that's plenty of yarn for a shawl, a um, thousand meters, just as a side note. Uh, 250 grams, 8.8 .8 ounces, okay? So if you use a G hook and a number two fine weight yarn, you'll be just fine if you need to substitute yarn. Um, we're gonna use this um, whole cake for this project. Now, because this is a gradient, can you see like how it starts with the dark green and then moves outward until you get to this like, um, kind of like a burgundy color? It's gonna be like a, a spectrum going from one end all the way and, and blend in the colors across, okay? Um, so it's gonna be a very beautiful display of stitches in this lovely um, palette that we're working with here, okay? Now, this particular line, yarn, I just wanted to say as a side note, the Twister Cake, it does have an, e I pulled this out um, before we started, but it has an easy start tab and that's tucked down in the middle. And so you kind of just look for the tab and it makes, it's so easy to get it started. So let's get started. We're gonna start with the rows. It's a very easy stitch sequence that we're gonna do and really easy to learn and memorize. So you can kind of like um, do the first couple of rows with me and then just kind of go off and work one. It's a very relaxing pattern. So let's get started. Okay, so I pulled out a little bit of yarn here and like I mentioned, it has a little tab. So we are gonna cut that off to get started. And what we want to do is just put that aside and we have our hook and our yarn and we're ready to go. So our pattern is a multiple of four. We're going to do 100 chains, but it's a multiple of four. So if you want to make it narrower or wider than I'm doing, um, if you're not familiar with the concept of multiples, just know when you're doing your starting chain, it's going to be like four plus four plus four plus four and so forth until you get about the width that you want. Um, and, and that's your multiples. So if you want, if you, you can make a blanket out of this, you can make a little scarf and anything in between. Okay. So we're going to do 100 chains to start. So what we want to do first is put a slip knot on our hook, wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop, bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your hook, bring up a loop and tighten. Then, like I said, we're going to do a hundred chains. So to make a chain, wrap the yarn around the hook, and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ninety-five, ninety-six, ninety-seven, ninety-eight, ninety-nine, and one hundred. Okay? So when you do your starting chain, you can sort of like open it up and lay it out and just kind of get an idea of how wide your shawl is gonna be. It'll give you a sense of that. If you need to change it, you can always pull this out and redo it. Just make sure that it's in those multiples of four. Okay, so for row one, we're gonna start by working a single crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. So this loop here does not count. So go one, two, three, and four. So to make a single crochet, insert the hook into the chain, bring up a loop. You'll have two loops on your hook. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through both loops. Okay. Then we're going to chain three. One, two, three. Then we're going to work a single crochet into the next chain. So work a single crochet into the next chain. And notice I'm going nice and slow. That's kind of because we're counting chains. Our yarn is thin, our hook is small. So just take your time with that. Okay. So we just worked a single crochet in the next chain and we're going to chain three. One, two, three. We're gonna skip two chains, and in the chain after that, work a single crochet. All right, again, going nice and slow. And then we're just kinda gonna repeat this sequence all the way across. We're gonna do it together, okay? If at any time you're kind of like getting the hang of it and you wanna keep going, you can always skip around, skip ahead. It's up to you. Okay, so we're just going to kind of repeat this sequence. So once again, chain three, one, two, three, work a single crochet into the next chain, just like that. Chain three, one, two, three. 
skip two chains in the chain after that, work a single crochet. All right, and then repeat. Chain three. One, two, three. Single crochet into the next chain. Again, going nice and slow. Chain three again. One, two, three. Skip two chains, work a single crochet into the chain after that. Okay, so as you can see, we're starting to get some kind of like little loops. We're creating some little loops across, okay? All right, let's repeat. Chain three. One, two, three. Work a single crochet into the next chain. Chain three. One, two, three. Skip two chains in the chain after that, work a single crochet. All right, we're just doing this all the way across. Again, if you wanna skip ahead, feel free. Okay, and then repeat. Chain three. One, two, three. Single crochet into the next chain. Chain three. One, two, three. Skip two chains in the chain after that, work a single crochet. All right, and then repeat. Chain three, one, two, three. Single crochet into the next chain. Chain three, one, two, three. Skip two chains in the chain after that, work a single crochet. All right, and repeat again. Chain three, one, two, three. Single crochet into the next chain. And chain three, one, two, three. Skip two chains in the chain after that, work a single crochet. And then we repeat. Okay, we're just doing this all the way across. All right, so chain three, one, two, three, work a single crochet into the next chain, and chain three. One, two, three, skip two chains in the chain after that, work a single crochet. And repeat, chain three. One, two, three, work a single crochet into the next chain, chain three. One, two, three. Skip two chains in the chain after that, work a single crochet. And repeat. Chain three. One, two, three. Work a single crochet into the next chain. Chain three. One, two, three. Skip two chains in the chain after that, work a single crochet. All right, and repeat. Chain three, one, two, three. Single crochet into the next chain. And chain three, one, two, three. Skip two chains in the chain after that, work a single crochet. And repeat, chain three, one, two, three. Single crochet into the next chain. Chain three, one, two, three. Skip two chains and single crochet into the next chain. Okay. All right. Once again, repeat, chain three. One, two, three, single crochet into the next chain. Chain three, one, two, three. Skip two chains and in the chain after that, work a single crochet. Okay, we're gonna repeat again, chain three, one, two, three. 
single crochet into the next chain, chain three. One, two, three. Skip two chains in the chain after that, work a single crochet. All right, repeat again, chain three. One, two, three, single crochet into the next chain. Chain three, one, two, three. Skip two chains in the chain after that, work a single crochet. Chain three, one, two, three, single crochet into the next chain. Chain three, one, two, three, skip two chains, work a single crochet into the chain after that. Chain three, one, two, three, single crochet into the next chain. Chain three, one, two, three, skip two chains in the chain after that, work a single crochet. All right, once again, chain three, one, two, three, single crochet into the next chain. Chain three, one, two, three, skip two chains in the chain after that, work a single crochet. Chain three, one, two, three, single crochet into the next chain. Chain three, one, two, three. Then we're gonna skip two chains and work a single crochet into the chain after that. And repeat once again. Chain three, one, two, three, single crochet into the next chain. Chain three, one, two, three, skip two chains, and in the chain after that, work a single crochet. All right, once again, chain three, one, two, three, single crochet into the next chain. Chain three, one, two, three, skip two chains, in the chain after that, work a single crochet in the next chain. Okay, we are getting very close to the end. All right, so chain three. One, two, three, single crochet into the next chain. And chain three. One, two, three, skip two chains and work a single crochet in the chain after that. Chain three, one, two, three, single crochet into the next chain. Chain three, one, two, three, skip two chains, work a single crochet into the next chain. Then we're gonna chain three, one, two, three, single crochet into the next chain, just like that. And then we're gonna chain three, one, two, three, skip two chains, and now we're at the last chain. We did it, single crochet into that last chain, okay? So row one just looks like a bunch of kind of lacy little loops so far, okay? Okay, so we made it through row one. I know it's a lot of skipping and counting and things. Row two, is a little bit of a quicker row, okay? So what we're gonna do for row two, and this is the row you'll do for the whole shawl, okay? So what we're gonna do is chain three, one, two, three, and we're gonna turn our work, okay? Then we're gonna skip that first single crochet of the row here, and we're going to, in that first chain three space, see this first space here? That's called the chain three space in the written pattern. What we're gonna do there is in that whole space, we're gonna work a single crochet, then a chain three. One, two, three, and then another single crochet, all in that same chain three space, just like that, okay? Then what we'll do 
is we'll chain three, one, two, three, and then we're gonna skip that next kind of loop that we made, that single crochet, chain three, single crochet. We're just gonna hop right over that into the next space. So these big loops is what we're gonna be working into, okay? So skip that next big space that you see and go over to the next space, okay? And in that space, we're gonna work a single crochet, chain three, one, two, three, and a single crochet all in the same space, okay? So it's gonna kinda look like that. All right, chain three. One, two, three, hop over that next chain three space and in the chain three space after that, work single crochet, chain three. One, two, three, and a single crochet all in that same space, all right? Just like that. Now, I know this stitch doesn't look like much at first, but it's gonna kind of start coming together, okay? So, after that, you'll chain three. One, two, three. Hop over that next chain three space, and in the chain three space after that, we're gonna work a single crochet, chain three. One, two, three, and a single crochet, all in that same space, okay? Chain three, one, two, three, hop over that next chain three space, just skip one over it, and in that chain three space after that, single crochet, chain three, one, two, three, and single crochet, all in the same space. Let's do a few more together, and then we can repeat this sequence across, okay? So, Let's kind of straighten it out and we can look at it a little bit. So you can kind of see this stuff is stacking on top. There's a little sort of like a picot framed in there in each area, okay? It'll start making more sense as we move along. Right now it just looks like a lot of loops. All right, so we're gonna chain three once again. One, two, three, hop over that next chain three space and in the space after that, single crochet, chain three, single crochet all in the same space. Chain three, one, two, three, hop over that next chain three space and in the one after that, single crochet, chain three, single crochet. Chain three, one, two, three, hop over that next chain three space and in the space after that, single crochet, chain three, single crochet, all in the same space. Hop over that next chain three space, and in the space after that, single crochet. And I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit because our piece is growing. Sing so we just did a single crochet, chain three, single crochet, all in that same space. Chain three, one, two, three, hop over that next chain three space, and in the one after that, single crochet, chain three, single crochet. Chain three, one, two, three, hop over that next chain three space, and in that next chain three space, single crochet, chain three, one, two, three, single crochet, all in the same space, all right? We're almost halfway there. Chain three, one, two, three, skip over that next chain three space. In the space after that, single crochet, chain three, one, two, three, single crochet in the same space, okay? So let's keep repeating this sequence across, all the way across, and when we get towards the end of this row, I'll show you how to finish up row two. All right, we are coming up to the end of the row here, so I'm just gonna keep working my sequence. Chain three, one, two, three. Skip over the next chain three space, and in the next chain three space, work your sequence. Single crochet, chain three, one, whoops, drop my loop, two, three, single crochet all in that same space. There's one more chain three space left of the row. We're gonna skip over that, do a chain three. One, two, three. Okay, so skip over that. And then in the turning chain space at the end of the row. So remember we did our chain and we turned, that created a space. 
in that turning chain space, we're just gonna work a single crochet to finish up row two, okay? Just like that, all right? So what you're gonna do for the rest of your piece is just keep repeating row two over and over and over and over again until your piece is as tall as you would like it to be, okay? So I'm gonna keep going with my row two and when we rejoin, we're gonna see this whole beautiful spectrum of color and kind of do some finish work, okay? All right, we're just coming up to the end of the row here, working our last stitch. And I can't wait to show you this beautiful shawl. So what we're gonna do is take our scissors, cut the yarn. Now, I don't have quite enough of this yarn cake to continue. I used all of it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the yarn and fasten off. And if you used a yarn cake like me, you're probably just gonna have like two ends here, okay? Um, I have one at the beginning and one at the end. Now, there's the one at the beginning. So now our gradient continues very gradually through here. Um, oh, I just want to show you too. Look how beautiful. This is where we started with this deep forest green color. And then it changed. It started getting some gold in it, lightening up. And then it became like a, a very like, almost like a mossy green, continued into this beautiful gold. And then we started seeing this like reddish color get introduced and finally it ended with the deep red. So it's so beautiful and delicate and has gorgeous drape. So let's do our last little bit of work on this. We're gonna go to the bottom where we began and thread our tapestry needle. And our gradient kind of uh, changes slowly. So we're gonna just, just make sure you stick in the same color area. It shouldn't be too hard if you used um, a yarn cake like I did. If your colors change a little quicker, just stay in that same color area so that your ends will blend in nicely, nice and neatly, I should say. Um, and I like to bring my needle back in the other direction with that tail still on there and just, um, kind of lock it into place. So grab your scissors again, and if you give it a little tiny tug, you wanna go real slow with these delicate yarns because um, you know they're delicate and fine, and so you gotta kinda of slow down with the finish work. Okay, and then that tail should disappear. All right, go back to the beginning. Where's our end? This is the end we just cut. All right, same thing. I have a slow color change here. Um, so I don't, you, you know, I don't have to worry about it going into that other color. So I'm just going to kind of stay up here with my color end, this deep, dark red color. So pretty. And we're just going to go one direction and come back into the other direction with our tail. And I just want to give it a little snip here. And then our piece is done. So for this particular stitch too, I like to kind of like shape it up a little bit. It kind of opens it up. You can also block this um, pattern. Um, these fibers will yield if you, if you give it a light little block. And with these threads that you see, you might have a few little ends here. Um, when they make this in the, where they manufacture it, these are actually multi strands of thread kind of twisted together and to make a little bit of a thicker yarn strand. So you can see this gold is actually one strand throughout and where the machine, where it changes on the machine, where they change the tones and starts getting to be the dark red, the yellow will run out and they'll tie it on. So you might see a, a few little areas where you can trim it back. But I like to, for this particular stitch, just kind of shape it up a little bit. Um, you, like I said, you can lightly block it. If you have never blocked anything before, here's another one, and you're interested, uh, see what I mean? That you might have some little ends just from in the manufacturing where they uh, tied the new thread on. Um, anyway, if you are interested in a blocking tutorial, let me know in the comments below because I have one that you can use um, to lightly steam it or to submerge it and wet block it too. And both of those are very helpful if you really want to see the stitches kind of look like this right now. But if you were to block it, they'd look more like 
this, okay? So if you're interested in doing that, let me know in the comments below and I'll share a video and photo tutorial for that. So our shawl is finished. It looks absolutely stunning. So that is how you crochet the fall celebration shawl. I hope you enjoyed this pattern and thanks so much for watching. Be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. Thanks everyone.